How you doing you all, welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto couldn't use Jutsu but mastered other powers. A you Naruto sibling. This is part 1 and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe. And do support author of this story. Tree link in description, do check it out. Let's get in the video. There is a saying. It goes like this, you learn everything you need to know in life in the first 5 years of your life. For Naruto, this holds true. Ever since that horrible night, the night in which the QB was freed from its prison in Kashina Namikas and then attacked Konoha, his life has been not what you expect. That night, the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikas, had to seal away the QB somehow. He would have done so by sealing the yang, or light side, of the QB into Naruto's sister, Karu, while sealing the other half of the QB into his brother Menma. Only, in order to save Minato, Saratobi arrived and did the sealing himself, with a smile as he died. Happy to be with his wife once more. Even though Naruto was the oldest of the three triplets born to Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzuamki, the poor blonde was seen as second best or in this case, third best in their opinion. They didn't even know that they were doing it and so didn't care. Some say that the reason for this is because of what happened just before the QP was released. When Kashina had finished giving birth to all three of her children, she was reasonably tired as hell. That was the perfect opportunity that the masked man to come in and threaten their way of life. He took Naruto and threatened Minato to back away from Kashina. The ending result was the QB's release. In the end, after all the fighting and the sealing of the two halves of the QB into Naruto's siblings, the event had caused a stigma and a darkness to grow within Minato and Kishina. Like Hiyashi's blaming of Hinata for being too weak to defend herself from being kidnapped, they subconsciously blamed Naruto for the entire event. They didn't know that this hatred would grow, and the darkness would one day overtake them. Be something far more dangerous in their lives. So throughout the years, it was not fun for the blonde-haired boy. For the first five years of his life, he learned to take care of himself. When they bought clothes for them, they only bought him the bare minimum, if they even bothered at all, Will Karu and Menma got all that they ever wanted. The same went for food. They went out and asked the three of them what they wanted, but when Naruto offered, Minato and Kishina just seemed annoyed with him. So they went to wherever Karu and Menma wanted to go. It was all about Karu and Menma. So when they started to train his other siblings, they left him in the dust, saying their training was more important due to the QB. To him that was just a cover saying that they didn't feel he was important enough. He was nothing. He tried multiple times throughout that year, and it just ended in disappointment, with each reaction harsher. So he gave up trying to get them to train him and he did it on his own. He also knew they would be pissed that he was training because they told him that he would training in the academy, but he felt cheated in that area, because they were clan. Clans were supposed to train their children before the academy. So he trained on his own, making sure they never found out. Naruto shook his head at the memories as he sat in the classroom, waiting for Iruka to come in and announce the teams. While that was happening, he remembered how he got there and his training. He remembered at one point that his father had to go to talks with Anoki and Iwa, so that they could be allies. So, for reasons he didn't understand at the time, Minato had him come along. It was horrible. On the way there, him father would barely talk to him, and when he did, the man was just cold. So he stopped trying to talk and kept silent. However, when they got to Iwa, Minato began talking and smiling at everyone. It hurt Naruto to see this because the man never smiled at him. A simple smile was too much after all. And it was kind of odd since he knew Iwa was pretty pissed at his father after the last war. However, the most notable aspect of that trip was him making his first and best friend. Flashback. Naruto was bored. He sat in a boring office while his father and the Tsuchikage talked about things that he didn't understand or just didn't care about. He turned his head to look back at them, and with his father's back to him, he saw that the short old man had confusion in his eyes, wondering why Naruto was even here, and why Naruto looked so miserable. Of course Naruto didn't know that, all he saw was confusion. He was seven, he wasn't meant to know all that yet. Thankfully, his boredom was stopped by the opening of a door, and in rushed a little girl his age. The girl has short black hair, unique pink eyes, a red shirt with a sleeveless brown vest over it, a pair of brown shorts, and open toes brown sandals. Grandpa. I am bored. Let's. Oh. She said, stopping short of what she wanted when she saw said old man talking to a blonde-haired guy that her dad didn't like. Itsuchikage chuckled. Sorry, Kuritsuchi, I am busy at the moment. He then turned to Naruto and smiled. Boy, you must be bored out of your mind. Would you mind keeping my granddaughter company? Sure. Naruto replied, his voice full of energy as he jumped up, took hold of Kuritsuchi's hand, and hightailed it out of the room. Minato eyed the Tsuchikage and said, Anoki, are you sure that was wise? The old man shrugged. Why not? They are kids. It is not like if they don't get along that this alliance will break. Besides, your son looked bored. 
he said while noticing that Minato had a look of pure annoyance on his face, making him wonder why the man was so annoyed. Should he be happy that his son was happy? Then he had his answer. It was telltale, but he saw it like he did many years ago in his friend Rashi's family. At the mere mention of Naruto being happy, the color in Minato's eyes flash red for just a second, but that was all Anoki needed. Poor kid, his family must be strongly affected by the hatred infection to be their sole target. I wonder who else it is affected. Do they even know what is happening to them? Triple X. So your name is Kuritsuchi? Naruto asked, making the girl nod. Cool, I am Naruto. Nice to meet you Naruto. Kuritsuchi replied with a smile as they slowed their pace and simply walked through the village, get many to look their way. So what kind of fun do you guys have around here? Kuritsuchi smiled at that. She figured that they didn't have the same games as they did in Konoha, so that was to be expected. Well, we have a game called Boulder Rush that I usually play with either my dad or grandpa, but they are both busy right now. What about your other friends? Don't you play with them too? The young girl scowled at that. No, I am unapproachable or something like that. Huh? Why? Because my grandpa is the Tsuchikage, and people are afraid of offending me and by proxy him. Kuritsuchi said sadly. Naruto noticed her extensive vocabulary and chalked it up to who her family was. So, they should know it is obviously hurting you. Back home, I am the oldest son the fourth Hokage, and people treat me normally. He said, but that was mostly because the people there have noticed how Naruto was treated by his own family, so they treated him like a normal person for his sake. Must be fun. Kuritsuchi pouted while wondering why it was different for Naruto. Meh, it's okay. Naruto replied. But the main thing here is, I will be your friend because I really don't care who you are related to. The black-haired girl stared at the blonde boy for a while, before her face broke into a big smile, and she hugged him. Thank you. No problem. Naruto said. No one should be truly alone. Backing away with a smile, Kuritsuchi asked, so ready to play Boulder Rush. I'm game. Triple X. Seriously? Naruto asked after they got to a strange spot and Kuritsuchi had explained the rules. They were currently on a fairly large hill next to a giant boulder overlooking a giant lake. Apparently, they were supposed to push a giant boulder down into the lake to create a huge splash. The only problem was, Naruto was not sure they were strong enough to push the damn thing. They were a couple of kids after all. Yeah. Kuritsuchi replied before a thoughtful look passed her face. However, I am not sure how grandpa does this to be honest. It looks heavy. How does your dad do it? Um he punches it with a rock encased fist. The girl replied simply. Naruto looked at him own fist and then to the boulder. Nope. Then how are we going to do this? Kuritsuchi asked. Push it as hard as we can. The blonde offered. Fine with me. Kuritsuchi shrugged before rushing at the boulder and pushing with her whole body. Naruto shook his head before doing the same, the both of them going red in the face as they did so. Finally, their bodies gave out, however, due to the sweat on their bodies, they slipped along the boulder as they lost their footing. They landed in front of the huge boulder on top of each other. Thankfully, Naruto managed to land on top where he used his arms to stop his fall, with both of them on either side of Kuritsuchi's head. They just laid there staring at each other while catching their breath. Kuritsuchi had a small blush on her face due to their position and was about to say something when something happened. Crack. The two paled and looked back at the boulder, noticing that in their fall, they kicked a thick plank of wood keeping the boulder in place, and with it gone, the boulder was free to move. Only problem was, it was coming right at them. So helping the raven-haired girl up, the two ran down the slope and away from the boulder that was on their heels. We're not going to make it. Kuritsuchi cried. Like hell we're not. Naruto raged as they kept running. However, they soon came upon a problem. They were running out of land and quick due to the lake in front of them. Naruto silently cursed. He would have to reveal some of his chakra control training to survive this, hopefully Kuritsuchi was not a blabbermouth. Slowing down just a bit, Naruto scooped Kuritsuchi up bridal style, added a constant flow of chakra to the soles of his feet, and ran along the water, just as the boulder crashed into the water. However, even though he thought they were safe, he was wrong because the crash boulder had created a wave of water that was surging towards them. Though come on Naruto deadpanned as the wave almost hit them. Almost being the key word because Naruto cut the chakra to his feet and sank while letting the current take him to the other side of the wave, and then running on top of it to ride it out. All the while, Kuritsuchi was looking on in amazement. Their little reprieve of danger was cut short as Naruto not only lost his footing, but his control over his chakra as well. The end result was them getting swept up by the rest of the wave, and then getting slammed on the other side of the lake, right into an outcropping of rock. When Kuritsuchi came to, she found that she was in Naruto's arms with his back to an outcropping of rock, no doubt made by her grandpa's men one of those mask-wearing guys. Still, they saved them and Naruto saved her. He was cool her in books. 
Naruto opened his eyes and said, are we dead? The soaking wet girl laughed out loud at her equally soaked blonde friend and said, nope. But how were you able to walk on water like a ninja? About that, can we keep this a secret? Naruto asked. Kuritsuchi hesitated for a moment before sighing and nodding. Good, because I have been training myself while my parents trained my siblings. Come on, I'll tell you on the way back. The girl nodded she followed her new friend back into town, while her father's Anbu followed and listened in as well, curious about the boy. Triple X. The duo and secret third wheel made it back to Anoki's Kage Tower in little time at all, and by then they were dried off thanks to the sun's rays, but it was starting to get dark out. Kuritsuchi put her arm around the blonde shoulder and said, your family sucks, but if you are training to get back at them for ignoring you, then I say go for it. And if it doesn't work out, you can come here. After all, you are my friend. Thanks Kuritsuchi. Naruto said a bit shyly, not used to people truly believing in him other than Tsunade and Shizune. You know, you are my first friend. Kuritsuchi looked at him for a moment, not believing it for a moment, and then she thought about her own situation, and then smiled. She hugged him and said, mine too, but I think you are my best friend. Naruto gave off a megawatt smile and nodded. Cool. The girl let go of her new friend and start to walk back into the tower, but before she could, she stopped. Naruto was about to ask if she was okay, but he didn't get a chance to because Kuritsuchi backtracked to him. Oh and. Thanks for saving me. She said while planting a small kiss on his cheek before running back into the tower. Naruto watched the girl run back into the tower a bit dazed while he held his cheek. No problem. He droned out, making the hidden Anbu chuckle as he disappeared to report back to his superior. Triple X. Anoki sighed while his hands messaged his forehead. His Anbu had just gotten back to him after he sent the man to look out for the two kids. He had been surprised to find out that Naruto was able to walk on water somewhat with obviously no help from his parents. He was actually happy that a boy learned how to do so or else he and Kuritsuchi might be dead from their boulder rush game. Something he needed to do about like teach Kuritsuchi how to manipulate the boulder's weight. However, what got him was how the boy was dealing with the situation. He was training to eventually show them he meant something, and then there was Kuritsuchi's offer, which he didn't think was a bad idea. Still, with the boy's story, it was just as bad as or worse than Rashi's experience. Minato and Kishina along with a few family friends were the most affected by the hatred infection, while the young blonde siblings seemed barely affected by it. Odd. But whatever, he was sure the boy could do it. Then, another Anbu appeared in his office to give him some info on Naruto's predicament. Sir. It would seem that Minato is asleep and has locked his son out of their given apartment. Thank you, you my leave. Anoki replied with some annoyance. He stood up to leave and help the boy since he himself had a key, but stopped as a scroll on his desk caught his attention. Should I? He asked aloud before shaking his head. Why the hell not, Rashi already thinks Kuritsuchi has the potential to use the lava element, so she won't really need it. Triple X. Naruto sighed as he made his way to the roof of the apartment building that Anoki let him and his father use for the duration of their stay. However, like usual, his father had locked him out after a long day of work, not bothering to even care if Naruto was there or not. Figures. Naruto grumbled as he stared out around the village of Iwa in twilight. Something on your mind boy? A familiar voice asked him from behind. Naruto wiped around to see old man Anoki floating a few inches off the ground. The blonde shook his head and said, no, not really. Just wondering why my family is like it is. Anoki nodded, when you do, you will have to face something dark. When that time comes, I feel that you will need all the power you can get. What do you mean? Naruto asked, not understanding. Anoki smiled as he handed Naruto a scroll. You'll know when the time comes. He said as he floated back to his tower, but not before turning back to Naruto, in the meantime, get some rest. Once he was gone, Naruto looked back at the scroll to see two things. One was a key, mostly likely to the apartment. The other was words on the scroll. Dust release. Then flashback. Naruto smiled at the memory. Anoki and Kuritsuchi truly believed in him, and that was good enough for him. And thankfully, him and Kuritsuchi still kept in touch with letters they sent each other every month. Despite the distance, they really were best friends. Turning his head, he looked at his reflection as he still waited for his teacher to show up. Must be preparing himself for a goodbye speech. He does like to talk. He thought. Naruto was currently wearing the usual open-toed sandals for ninja, but they were white. His pants were jeans that were bleached white as well. He had on an orange t-shirt with a white unzipped white hooded jacket over it. On the back was his special kanji that the higher level ninja and a few civilians knew the true meaning of. It was the kanji for chaos. It was his secret to keep until the time was right. The tap on his shoulder brought him out of his musings. The blonde looked to see three out of five of his only friends in the academy. Shino, Shikamaru, and Choji. 
While Choji was coolest most of the time on Naruto's plan, Shino and Shikamaru had picked up on Naruto's plan. They also felt for him because of his situation. Shikamaru found that Naruto was a challenge for him and found out Naruto's plan right off the bat, thinking it was ingenious. The blonde could have left at any moment that he wanted, yet he stayed in the village to piss of his family and eventually show them what he could do. Now what the blonde could do was something not even he knew. He was still trying to figure that one out. Shino figured it out as well, but did not become friends for that reason. Despite hating his brother and sister for the QB among other reasons, Naruto did not hate Shino right off the bat because of his bugs like most people did. The blonde had accepted him because he thought the bug clan was cool. Joji was a friend of Shikamaru, and that was main reason he became friends with Naruto. The big bone boy knew the blonde was hiding something, but he didn't mind the boy, even if he could be as broody as an Achiha at times when in the presence of his family. At other times, he was just a goof, and it pissed off his parents visibly that he didn't take much seriously. Naruto's other two friends at their own desks across the room. There was Kiba and Akamaru. Kiba was a brash kid like him and with the others, they would often cause a little panic with their skipping school and other such pranks. Kiba hadn't really figured out Naruto's situation and really didn't care. Kiba was friends with him just because. Thankfully, it seemed that his mother had figured it out and encouraged a friendship. Finally was Sasuke Ichiha. Which was a surprise since Naruto thought that most of the Ichiha were all stuck up even after a certain incident. But Sasuke was a friendly guy and often looked up to his brother since Itachi was the new clan leader. A tiring job yes, but he made time for his brother when he could. Sasuke was surprisingly the second best in class and he was okay and at the same time not okay with it. Sasuke was not really pushing for rookie of the year, but he just did not get along with Naruto's brother, Menma, and so they were always at each other's throats. Thankfully, he didn't have a problem with Naruto. Who do you think will be on your team? Choji asked while munching on his ever-present bag of chips. I would prefer it to be any one of you since we all passed. Naruto said. Yes he passed, but he made it so that he did just barely. Still, this was all just a front. Naruto had a plan, and it did not include them. It included his siblings and eventually making fools out of them, destined children his ass. Logical since we are your main friends. Despite Kiba being a friend, he is not close and seems to prefer your sister, which makes it hard to develop a friendship with him. Shino concluded, to which Naruto nodded too. Yes, Kiba had a major crush on two girls in class, his sister Karu and Hinata Hayuga. Both often spurned his advances, but he never gave up like the dog he was. Still, Naruto thought Karu and Kiba made a good couple. They were both full of themselves after all. I also wouldn't mind being on Sasuke's team. I think he wants to replace his father for the head of the police force to take some of the weight off of Itachi's shoulder. Noble. Shino replied. Yeah, I would have thought Sasuke's personality would have darkened when his father died in that incident. Choji said. Lucky for us, he didn't. Shikamaru drawled out. I am good with you guys as well, but if I am correct, the Hokage will try and remake the Inoshikacho team. Logical since your fathers are one to the best teams. Shino replied with a nod. Then, Haruka finally came in. That man had always been on Naruto's side. He always rooted for Naruto and often took him to the Chirakus. He was basically a father to the boy or a big brother. However, most of the other low-level ninja of the village viewed Naruto as a lost cause and just didn't care for the boy, yet the higher-ranking ninja saw the boy's situation and had a high amount of respect for him for not leaving, but the downside of this was that they lost respect for the Hokage and the rest of his family. Yet they did not let it show much. Okay class. This is the last time we will see each other for a while, and I am proud to be your teacher. Thank you. Hiroka said as he began his speech. When he was finally done, he got to the teams. Most of them were not of note until he got to Team 7. Okay Team 7 is Menma Namikas, Karu Namikas, and Naruto Namikas, Yu Sensei is Kakashi Haddock. That was not really a surprise to most people. Since Menma was Rookie of the Year and Karu was the top Kanoichi, it was expected that they would be on a team together, along with whoever was the dead last, and in this case it was Naruto. All of Naruto's friends, however, cringed. They knew of Naruto's dislike for his own family, along with a family friend that seemed to not care either way, and now he would be spending more time with them. That had to suck. Sasuke shook his head and gave Naruto a nod of good luck to his friend, hoping that Naruto survived his family. Still, it was what Naruto had planned. On the outside, his knuckles were white, showing his friends that he was not happy, but that was mostly for the name, Namikas. He hated that name since he felt he wasn't even part of the family. On the inside, he was laughing evilly. One step closer to making fools out of his family. Next we have Team 8. Hinata Hayuga, Shino Aburam, and Kiba Inuzuka. Your sensei is Kurana Yuhi. Haruka continued, and only seeing a sad look on Hinata's face and a brash one on Kiba's, he went on to the next team. 
Team 9 and still in circulation from last year, so we have Team 10. Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akimichi. Your sensei Asuma Siratobi. He paused when Shikamaru drawled out a lazy called it and then continued. Team 11 is Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno, and Sai. Your sensei is Itachi Ichiha. At last one made everyone raise an eyebrow. Haruka saw and expect this, so he explained. Sasuke, your brother wishes to teach you despite being the clan head and all that entails. However, your mother is capable to leading the clan as well since she is a clan heir as well. So Itachi is working in shifts with your mother on that front. Aruka paused for a moment and said, Sai, well not being in this class will be at your team meeting. As for who he is, well. He is part of Danzo's route and Hokage-sama is giving that man another chance by integrating one of his younger subordinates back into the ninja force. Sort of like an experiment of sorts. Sasuke raised an eyebrow at this and then shrugged, not really caring anymore. He was more interested in learning under his brother. Sakura on the other hand was more wary of her new teammate, having heard some things about Root from her dad. Your senseis will be here to pick you up in a few minutes. See you later. With that, Iruka left the room just as most of the sensei came for their students. Some happy about being teachers and students while other just didn't give a damn. However, as predicted, Kakashi was not there. He would be late, so Naruto leaned back and put his feet on the desk while observing his teammates. First was Karu. She was flame-haired to put it simply. Most of her hair was blonde with the tips being red. She wore red ninja sandals, skin-tight black pants, and a red shirt that seemed to be skin-tight as well. It hid not much to the imagination of her developing figure. See cup breasts and all. She also had two curved blades on her back. Hair was loud. To a lot of people she could be mean and then cute to some. She tried helping Naruto by yelling at him, and when that didn't work, she was really nice and cute. It was odd and irritating at that same time, and it gave Naruto a headache. He would call her at Sunday or if that was the word for it, but he was not sure. Naruto was also clueless to her feelings towards him due his own dislike for his family. He often thought that since she was the only one not to ignore and hate him. He felt that she was playing some sort of game and therefore didn't trust her. Then there was Menma. He had red hair with black tips. Many thought it was badass. Naruto thought it made him look like an ass. The boy had black ninja sandals, black cargo pants, and a silver tank top to show off his developing muscles. Like other ninja he had his ninja tools on the back of his belt. Like Karu and most of their family, Menma was loud and he was egotistical to the level of Ichiha on some days. He and Naruto did not get along at all. Others thought that they actually hated one another. However, it wasn't always like this. Menma used to get along with Naruto, not buying into their family and some friends not giving Naruto a chance. That changed over the years as he too saw Naruto as nothing but dead weight. So he began to hate the blonde boy with a passion, often degrading him like their dad did on occasion. To him, Naruto was worthless and that Jiraiya had been right. Naruto closed his eyes. Yes, with all of his training and not just in the dust release, he would show them he was not the worthless brat they made him out to be. He would show them, more importantly, he would show that damn toad sage that he was not nothing. Naruto snapped his eyes open and smiled. And I show them the power of Naruto Ranyaku. What a waste of time. Minato ground out as he did paperwork while also talking to Kakashi. Said sensei thought he would speak to his old sensei before he went to check on his supposed team. What is sensei? Kakashi asked in his usual bored manner. Me keeping to Saratobi's way of setting up teams. Minato replied with a frown. So far it has worked, but this time it won't and it pertains to your new team. Menma is the rookie of the year and Karu is the top Kanoichi, which is to be expected. However, the dead last this year is my other son Naruto. Kakashi noted the distant in Minato's voice when he said that Naruto was his son. It was no secret that Minato disliked Naruto to a point of hatred, and no one could really figure out why. Kakashi himself didn't feel that way, however, since he was so lazy most of the time due to losing Rin and Ibido, he just didn't care. Most of the time, he would let Minato's words about Naruto pass him by, but since he was going to be teaching Naruto, he needed to do something. He had also noticed that Kashina didn't care much about her firstborn as well, which baffled him, since she was a very kind and caring person. He just could not figure out the why of things. But he did have an idea. It could be related to what the cause of the QBs released that fateful night. Whatever went on that got a lot of Anbu, Suratobi's wife, and Shizun's medic friend dead and caused some sort of stigma in the family, and the focus of that was Naruto. Another piece of info that made him think was the Ichiha incident. Mikoto and Itachi both confirmed a strange masked man that tried using Jinjutsu to cause Fugaku and a few others to cause a coup d'etat. Thankfully that ended in failure because Fugaku broke free of it, declaring that the Ichiha would find their own way to power and then rushed the masked man. 
The end result was Fugaku and many other Ichiha and the police to die at the hands of this masked man. The news of the event caused a new spark of rage within Minato, and from that point on, he became far harsher on Naruto. To Kakashi, that meant that whoever that masked man was, he was the cause of all the hatred within the Namika's family, and it pained him to see things like this. And Lord Jiraiya didn't help. He just made it worse with his damn toad prophecy. Something that Kakashi didn't really believe because Jiraiya had said on numerous occasions how senile the old toad was. No, he would make his own opinions of Naruto now that he was his teacher, and maybe he could help the boy. Don't be too judgmental sensei. Under my tutelage, he may just surprise you. Fah. Minato growled out. No offense Kakashi, but I doubt you can savage anything from a worthless piece of trash like him. He is nothing. We'll see. Kakashi replied simply while on the inside he was shocked to hear his sensei say such a thing. Just remember that Lord Jiraiya was in the same boat as Naruto back in his days and look how he turned out. Minato still wasn't convinced. But Naruto is not Jiraiya sensei. The brat has no talent whatsoever. How he managed to pass the exams is beyond my comprehension. Minato retorted. Ever since the day that Naruto refused his training a few years into the academy and how he was doing in school was brought up, he lost all interest in Naruto. Verbally putting him down whenever he could. Minato sighed with a sad yet angry look. Sometimes I think it would be best that he was never born in the first place. Bakashi shook his head as he walked out to meet his students. This conversation was getting too depressing even for him, because Minato was starting to sound like Hiyashi. Triple X. Two hours later for the genin, a man with gravity-defying silver hair, walked through the door with an extremely bored look on his. Um in his eye. Yeah, he had a mask on to cover the lower half of his face, and his headband covered one of his eyes. He wore the standard uniform for all jonin. My first impression of you three is that I am already bored with you. He received two glares and one snore. Kakashi had excited as he did a quick observation of his would-be students. Kara was always cheerful and from what he knew of her, she was very strong since she was trained by her parents. However, she was a little arrogant and not that smart when it came to certain situations. He would have to work with that. Menma was one kid he was not fond of. Kakashi knew the boy was strong, but without experience, that meant nothing, yet the kid could be as arrogant as an Achiha at times, and he hated his brother with a passion. Something passed down from father to son it would seem. He had his work cut out for him. Then there was Naruto. His sensei's failure of a son, however, he blamed Minato. Naruto's parents never really spent time with him. At all. And for that they thought he was a failure because he didn't accept their training. In the last year of the academy. Minato preached about family, yet didn't really consider his son family. It just made no sense to the son of the White Fang. Of course, Kakashi knew about looking underneath the underneath. Naruto was hiding something and he was determined to find out. After all, he was on his side. Now to just wake him up. Please wake up Naruto and meet me on the roof. Kakashi ordered before walking out the door, face down in his little orange book. Menma scoffed. You wake up the failure or let him rot there, I ain't waking him up. He said before getting out of his chair to make his way to the roof. Waste of time for this team anyway. Peru sighed and went to her older brother, knowing that Menma would not bother with such a menial task. However, once she reached him, his head snapped to her and he opened his eyes in a fierce glare, scaring the crap out of her. Um, Kakashi sensei said. I heard him. The blonde cut her off before walking out the door, leaving a sad Karu in his wake. How am I going to get through to him? She thought as she trudged after him. There was a reason he hated her after all. She was the one to mention how badly he was doing in the academy. Flashback. Are you kidding me? An 11-year-old Karu asked as she stared at her brother in disbelief. You are failing the academy. Doesn't matter. Just drop it. Naruto grumbled out as they entered the mansion. Menma just scoffed as he walked past, not caring. Naruto was a waste of his time, and why Karu bothered even helping Naruto was beyond him. Once inside, Naruto got to work on his studies by reading a book on the couch. Normally he would be left alone, which was good for him so that he could read in peace, but fate seemed to hate him that day because his father walked in the room. Normally that would not be so bad, but the man was staring at him instead of ignoring his presence. Naruto, I need to talk to you. Minato asked, catching Karu, Menma and Kashina's attention. What about? Naruto replied, keeping his tone civil. Tempers often flared in this family after all. I think I should train you now that you know how to harness your own chakra. Minato replied, gauging his son's reaction. Karu looked happy while Kashina kept on a neutral look on her face, and Menma rolled his eyes, knowing it would not help Naruto. Now. In the fucking last year of the academy. Naruto thought angrily as an intense glare made its way to his face. No thank you. Naruto said, shocking the family. W what? Minato asked in shock. He thought Naruto wanted to be trained. 
he asked when he was five all the time. Kashina raised an eyebrow at her son's behavior, but left it to her husband. Still, she found it odd that the boy would not want their training. You heard me, I have no interest. Naruto said. One fucking year of your training and then pawn me off to some low-level jonin, so you won't have to deal with me. No thanks. Hera looked at Naruto with a frown and spoke the words that further separated the family, but she was only trying to help. Brother, you should take his offer since you are failing the academy. Naruto growled and sent his sister the most menacing glare he could must, while Kishina rolled her eyes and left the room, although she seemed a bit distracted. Still, he was not worth her time. Menma smirked and followed his mother example. Minato's eyebrows shot up past his hairline and nearly shouted, what? Why did you refuse my training then? Because I don't need your help. I've survived this long without your help. Naruto ground out. You haven't bothered to help until now and I don't want it anymore. I'll figure out my own ninja way father. He then got up from the couch and walked out the door, slamming as he left. It was not like he actually lived there or anything. Naruto never noticed the look of pure rage on Minato's face, nor Kara's extremely hurt look. Then again, he really didn't care. Flashback end. I was just trying to help back then she thought sadly. Still, she would not give up despite her friends telling her to give up, on both trying to regain Naruto's trust and his affections. She loved him a lot and wanted to be with him, no matter what Jiraiya said about him. To her, he was not nothing. She didn't even care if others thought her feelings for him were weird. Ino and Sakura had tried to convince her that Naruto was a lost cause and to give up on her feelings for him, but that ended in disaster for them. Even Hinata told her to give up, but she knew that girl's game. Hinata liked Naruto as well, and she would not lose to her. She was so into her own thoughts that she didn't even notice that she was the last one to the roof and already sitting down in between her brothers. She noticed that Menma was sitting on a step that led to the edge of the roof, and he looked a little pissed, probably for being on a team with his brother. And Naruto was leaning against a railing on the roof while having a bored look on his face. Bakashi cleared his throat and began. Well, now that we are all here, a pause for the group to look at Karu, who just looked annoyed at being singled out. We can begin. First I want to tell you that you may think you are Genin, but you are not yet. So, tomorrow, we will have a test of sorts to see if you have what it takes to truly be Genin and be on my team. But before that, let's get to know each other. Why don't you go first? Karu suggested. Kakashi eyed her with a bored look. Fine. My name is Kakashi Haddock. My likes, my dislikes. Hmm, I have hobbies. My dream for the future is none of your concern. All we learned was his name which we already knew. The new genin mentally shouted in annoyance. Since you opened your big mouth about all of this, you go first flamehead. Kakashi ordered. Haru pouted cutely with her cheeks puffed out before she relented. My name is Karen Amicus. I like my family and heaps of Raymond. I also like to train and hang out with my friends. I dislike doing nothing and the three minutes it takes for Raymond to cook. My hobbies I like to train. My dream for the future Karu smiled sadly at that. Maybe be Hokage like my mom wanted to and to have a family of my own. While the others looked away, she looked at Naruto at the end. Okay so I have Minato's daughter who has great potential and for some odd reason, what to be with her brother, who everyone can tell, hates her. But then again, everyone knows she loves him. Odd. Kakashi thought, but he was not going to interfere with that. Menma raised an eyebrow and kept silent. Hokage, huh. That arrogant ass would just give it to her now if he could. What a waste of time. Naruto thought boredly. Those were the thoughts running through Kara's potential team. Okay then, you're up red. Menma smirked. He didn't mind that nickname. Fine with me. As you already know, I am Menma Namikas. I like training, Raymond, and strong people because that is what matters in this world. He paused to give Naruto an arrogant smirk, who continued his bored look. I dislike a lot of things, starting with the dead last loser leaning against the railing. Naruto, do us all a favor, fall off the building and die. That way you won't weigh down the team. Naruto just flipped him the bird. Karu on the other hand slapped Menma across the face with an unpleased look on her face. Listen up Menma, quit being such an ass to him. Your siblings and teammates now for God's sake. Menma snorted. Maybe if he wasn't such a useless sack of shit and the rest of the family didn't hate his guts, then I might be civil towards him. But until that time comes, he can die for all I care. Asshole. Karu grumbled. Whatever, now, my hobbies are none of you concern. My dreams for the future are to marry a strong woman and be Hokage in place of father he turned to Naruto with a smirk. You will be the first to go when I rule. Again, the blonde just stared at the boy like he was an idiot before going back to not caring. Used to all the verbal put-downs by his own family. Oh god, he is worse than I thought. I need to whip this kid into shape. He needs to learn boundaries, among other things. Kakashi thought while shaking his head. 
Apparently Menma took to Minato's style of family a little too much. Arrogant asshole. We're family, we are not supposed to act like this. Kara thought angrily. Great, two arrogant prodigies. Why do I have the most rotten luck in the world? Last is you, you little ball of shine. Kakashi said, referring to Naruto, who gave him a deadpan look. My name is Naruto. There is not a whole lot I like, but I do like Raymond and being lazy. There are a lot of things I hate. My hobbies include just lazing the day away, like Inara. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment and then said, for my dreams, I guess it doesn't matter, I won't last long anyway, being a failure. After all, I am nothing. He said, ending it with a creepy smile that sent shivers down their spines. Sigh this kid is something else. They really did a number on you, but I see through that facade. You are hiding something big. Just what is it? Bah, loser. At least you accepted your fate. Oh Naruto. I love you with all my heart. Why are you like this? Karu obliviously thought before she opened her mouth. Don't worry Naruto. I'll protect you. Great. Naruto replied sarcastically while rolling his eyes, my death has been prolonged today. That made Karu look at him sadly, but then she put on a determined look. She just saw this as another challenge. That's a promise of a lifetime. Karu declared, earning an annoyed look from her brothers. Menma didn't bother saying anything though because she would just ignore it or lose her temper on him like their mom did to certain people. Kakashi just sweat dropped at the whole scene, silently cursing his old teacher for this extremely dysfunctional team. Okay, let's meet at training ground 7 tomorrow at 7. And remember, this test has a 66.6% 6 failure rate. Oh and it would be best just to not eat any breakfast, unless you want to throw up. Later. With that, Kakashi went up in smoke. Ugh, fine, let's just go home. Menma stated as he and Karu got up to go home. Karu was the one to notice that Naruto was not going in the same direction as them. Naruto, where are you going? The way. Was the short reply. Forget him Karu, it is not like he actually welcome at home. Menma stated, making Karu sigh in exasperation. Triple X. Naruto arrived to one of his favorite spots in the village, despite his family being there occasionally. That would be Ichiraku's Raymond stand of course. Hey Naruto, your usual. Tucci asked with a smirk, knowing all of the orders by heart for Naruto and his siblings. That would be great, thanks. Naruto replied as he noticed that AM was not there. So where is AM? Tucci smiled and said, out delivering orders, if you stay long enough, you'll probably see her here. Thanks. Naruto replied. AM was a special girl that Naruto often saw as a sister, however, she would often flirt with him, but despite that, he thought she was a better sister than the one he had. Soon, his order arrived and he started chowing down. However, his mind was not on the great gift that was Raymond. No, it was on a subject he often reflected upon. That day when Jiraiya came to deliver the so-called prophecy that drove the spike between him and his so-called family further in. Flashback. The seven-year-old Naruto was walking to his father's office to annoy him like he usually did just to show the man that he was still there. After all, the man loved to ignore him since they got back from Iowa. When he got there, he noticed that the door was cracked open and there was someone talking. So being the curious kid he was, he stayed on the outside of the room and listened in. From the crack, he saw his whole family was in there along with a man that just showed his eye, Tsunade, Shizun, and a tall white-haired man. It was the white-haired man that was speaking. I have gathered you all because I have received a prophecy from the Grand Toad Sage. Jiraiya stated. Really? What is it? Kashina asked. Jiraiya seemed to pause there, as if thinking about something. It goes like this. Two children from powerful parents will decide the fate of the world. They will be its destruction or its salvation. I believe that these two children are Menma and Karu. Minato smiled brightly at this. So what should we do? Simple. Up their training. Focus solely on them. Jiraiya stated. That is no problem, we already do. Kashina replied simply. What about Naruto? Tsunade asked a bit peeved with Kashina and Minato, since they admitted that they obviously didn't train Naruto. Jiraiya scoffed. What about the brat? He is useless, I say just forget about him. In this situation, he is nothing. Huh, why would you say that Uncle Jiraiya? Asked younger Menma, a bit angry with the man. Jiraiya smiled at the young boy as he crouched down to his eye level. Because Menma, you and Karu are the only thing that matters. Your brother is useless trash with no talent. When he becomes a genin, then you will have to protect him if you want, but if he gets to tune in it will be a miracle. Just accept it. Menma turned away from the man with a sad look, but his mind had been made up then and there. Karu on the other hand just glared at the white-haired man, not believing the bullshit that came out of his mouth for one second. Tsunade, who had been disgustedly shocked by Jiraiya's words, had grown pissed with each passing second. Looking at Minato and Kashina to see that they were just accepting Jiraiya hurtful words was just sickening. Naruto was their son. 
Then there was Kakashi, who was just taking everything in with a bored look like he didn't even care. What the hell is wrong with you people? Tsunade raged, making Shizun jump, but she understood where Tsunade was coming from. What do you mean Tsunade? Minato asked. Naruto is your son damn it. Tsunade shouted. How can you just treat him this way? That boy is nothing Tsunade. Minato stated, but Tsunade notices the darkening of the man's eyes and the quick flash of red. Minato gained a sad look. He is such a disappointment. Sometimes I think it would have been best if he had never been born or had died in his hands that night. How can you think like that? Tsunade raged. You haven't even trained or spent time with him damn it. And why should we? Kashina growled, displaying the same reaction with the eyes, but also something else as well. She held her head for a second and looked distracted. Jiraiya took notice of this and widened his eyes in fear for some reason before he narrowing them, however, he did nothing to stop her, which confused Tsunade. He is not part of this family. Tsunade lost at them. This is utter bullshit, and you know it Kishina. She screamed before turning to leave. And where are you going? Minato asked, his eyes narrowed. Back to the hospital. Tsunade snarled. Since none of you give a shit about one of your own, it is up to me to make sure he stays alive. At least I care for him. Come on Shizun. Tsunade then ripped the door open and walked out into the hallway, however, she noticed a small blonde boy running further down the hall and out of sight. That sight put more rage into her system as she turned back to the room. To me, you are the worthless ones, so don't expect me to help you out. She never heard Kashina break the silence as she ran off to check on Naruto. Kashina held her head some more and whispered helplessly, no it is not like that. She paused and her voice became darker. He is connected to that man. While showing no reaction, Jiraiya was very creeped out and sweating on the inside. Triple X. Naruto. Tsunade called out as she found him crying at the entrance to the tower. The look she received was heartbreaking, and it made her want to cry alongside him. Instead, she crouched down and hugged him alongside Shizun. Why do they hate me? Naruto cried. I've done nothing to them. I don't know Naruto, I really don't. Tsunade said as she held back a sob of her own. But, I won't let anything happen to you. Me and Shizun may not have a lot of time thanks to our jobs, but we are there for you, and if you ever need help with ninja training, even medical training, just ask and we'll be there. Naruto calmed down after a while at that as he just held on to the two women. Okay. Was all he really said and they didn't know it, but something in him cracked that day. And flashback. Yes, ever since that day, he considered Tsunade more of a mother than Kashina and Shizun as a big sister. And true to their word, they had taught him all the medical knowledge he could ever want. He was a genius in his own right to the medical arts and it showed. Everyone in the hospital knew what he could do. Still, sometimes he would scare them when he said it was no big deal, often saying in his own creepy way that he was nothing. Tsunade knew the meaning of that phrase, and it hurt her every time he said it. A few minutes later, Naruto was walking home from the Raymond stand when he noticed a square rock following him. Ugh Konohimaru rocks don't follow people around or are square. Right like always boss. The boy shouted as he let go of the transformation and coughed on the smoke. Naruto chuckled to himself. He knew the kid because Asuma introduced them and they have been good friends since. Also, somehow the brat managed to see past his charade. Boss. Let's go prank some chunin. Okay. Naruto said with a rare smile. Triple X. Mom. I'm home. Karu shouted as she entered the mansion. Oh good. Tell me, who did you get for a team? Kashina said, walking into the living room. Oh, I got Kakashi as a sensei. Karu stated, which made Kashina's eyebrow twitch in annoyance. Kakashi, while being known for being one of her husband's last living students, was also known for being very late. All the time. And the fact that he never passed a team plus he was lazy as hell. Then there was the reading porn in public. That man just irritated her to no end. Then there is me, Menma, and Naruto. Kashina put a frown on her face. Two prodigies and the family failure. I get Menma, but why the hell did he put Naruto on the team? Haru heard the tone of distant in her mother's voice. It was not the first time she talked about her own son like that, but for the first time, Karu was questioning why. Well he is my brother for one, and I think father wants me and Menma to protect him. Kashina laughed at that. Oh you are too nice Karu-chan. One day you will be promoted and he will be left alone and probably die in the field, alone, like the worthless trash he is. Mom. Karu shouted in shock. How can you say that? Kashina looked miffed at her daughter's behavior but shrugged it off. I am only speaking the truth honey. She said before walking off while holding her head as if in pain, never noticing the glare her daughter was sending her way. What is going on? Is this why brother is like the way he is? Triple X. Menma was in his own room, having gotten home sooner than his sister, and he was fiercely and rapidly jabbing at a punching bag. 
He had an intense look on his face, but he mind was not on his task. I will not end up like that failure and have my own parents hate me. No. I will surpass them so much that they can't hate me. Yes, Menma had his own problems of paranoia to deal with. The next day, Naruto was the last to meet a training ground 7. He noticed that Menma glared at him like usual, but Karu seemed to be in deep thought. The blonde just shrugged it off, not really caring at all. A few minutes later, Kakashi arrived. Oh time that one good. Naruto thought with a smirk as he looked to see the man. Well it is nice to see you all. Kakashi stated with an eye smile. Now that we are all here, I believe we should begin and see if you all have what it takes to be shinobi. He took out two bells and attached them to his hip. You will have until noon to get these off me. Whoever doesn't get them, get sent back to the academy. But there are only two. Karu pointed out. Which means one of you will be going back. Kakashi said before looking at the sun. You will have to come at me with the intent to kill. Good luck and yes, you may begin. With that, all three disappeared. Well two of them did. Uh, what do you think you are doing Naruto? The blonde shrugged before walking off and sitting under a tree. Sitting down. No way in hell will some like me be able to do this by myself. Oh well, like I care. He said, but the last part with a glint in his eye as he looked at Kakashi. From the trees, two slaps to the head were heard. Come on Naruto. At least try. Karu thought angrily. So you are not even going to try? Kakashi asked. Naruto sighed like this was expending too much energy before he brought up a hand and waved it in a circle-like motion. They were stunned to find energy building up around said hand into the form of a ball. What is that? Kakashi asked, almost thinking it was the Rasengan. He wasn't far off. Takra ball. Naruto deadpanned as if it was the most obvious thing in the world before lazily tossing it to the man. Of course Kakashi dodged it by leaning to the side, but the man was not expecting the results. As soon as the ball hit a tree, it exploded, taking out a good chunk of the tree and making it fall. So this is the thing that could make you lucky enough to be Chunin. Menma thought as he remembered Jiraiya's words. The technique had promise, and Menma was not sure how good it actually was. Awesome. I knew you had power to protect yourself. Karu thought happily. Question is, would mom and dad accept you for this? After all, they seem to be against you no matter what, and I can't figure out why. Just how did he make that? Kakashi thought with a wide eye. There, I tried. Naruto stated before leaning his head back and closing his eyes. Hmm, he is hiding something, maybe I will find out during this escapade. Kakashi thought before shrugging outwardly, walking off, and disappearing. Soon the scarecrow-like man found Karu, and from what his old sensei told him, the girl was still really bad at Jinjutsu but that was kind of expected for a Jinchuriki. However, she should be able to detect the illusions and dispel them. Still, he would have to do an emotionally shattering one to get past the girl. He just hoped she forgave him later on. First lesson. Jinjutsu. Triple X. Karu was almost hiding perfectly from Kakashi or so she thought. She knew that the man was a Jonin, and while she was strong, she was barely a Jenin, despite being a Jinchuriki. That's it. I have to have them help me in getting the bells. Teamwork. Duh. She was about to get up, but a wind started blowing and things changed. Karu, I found out the true test. Came Naruto's voice. You too? Karu asked before a smile crept on her lips. Her mother was wrong, he was not worthless. It's tea he started but was cut off by a three-pronged kunai to the stomach, followed by their father appearing in a yellow flash and backhanding Naruto into a nearby tree. Dad? Karu asked in fear from his enraged face. On the outside of the Jinjutsu, Kakashi rose an eyebrow at that. What would he be doing in the hell viewing technique? You need to grow up Karu. Minato replied as Kashina appeared in the scene in full battle attire. Mom? Karu asked in disbelief. Okay, now Kakashi was concerned. What was this girl seeing that had her parents in it? I told you before honey, he is nothing but worthless trash. Something that needs to be put down. No care whispered, rooted in place as tears started falling from her face. Kashina ignored her. Menma, would you please be a dear and bring that failure over here, we are going to be helping your sister with her little problem. My pleasure. Menma said as he walked onto the scene and dragged Naruto to them before slamming his foot into Naruto's back to make sure he didn't escape. All with a cruel smile on his lips. What do you mean mother? Why is Menma in on this? Karu asked. He is just helping us get rid of this trash. Kakashi replied as he appeared on the scene. You two sensei? Karu asked, visibly shaking now on both sides of the Jinjutsu. Please don't. The real Kakashi was really starting to regret his Jinjutsu decision now. Her worst fear may be something very terrible. The illusion Kakashi took out a tanto and held it at Naruto's neck. From this point on, you will not have this worthless trash for a brother. 
he will be forgotten, and you will become a great shinobi with a great QB no Kitsune inside you, no longer held down by your sick love, and be one of my two students. No. Don't do it. He can be better. I'll help train him. No, please. I love him. Don't kill him. She shouted both ways, scaring the crap out of the real Kakashi, but the fake was not even phased. Not good enough. Once a failure, always a failure. Illusion Kakashi replied and brought the blade down on the blonde's neck, all the while the girl was screaming in the negative. Then it was over, the blonde's head came rolling over to her, with a look that said that she was not able to protect him. Peru carefully picked up his severed head as she fell to her knees, a waterfall of tears running down her face. No Naruto. No. She screamed out to the heavens in agony, making Kakashi look at her sadly, but also in a bit of pride for not resorting to the QP's power yet. If he continued this, he was sure the girl would bring out that power. And he was right. He soon felt that dark chakra leaking from her, changing her eyes from their violet color to a blood red. You really want to fight the great QP's power, Kakashi sensei. Fine. She screamed as her hair waved around menacingly. The strange thing about all of this though was how quickly it ended with Naruto's presence. Triple X. A few minutes earlier, Naruto was sitting under the tree, contemplating on how he would reveal his powers. He figured he should wait for a bit, but there was no harm in using them now to get the bells without being detected. It was then that he felt Kakashi engaging his sister with a Jinjutsu. Also, a clone of Kakashi was fighting Sasuke. He himself went to see that fight while he sent a clone to help his sister. So as the wind blew, he disappeared from that spot to see what was going on. A few seconds later, he was viewing the end of Jinjutsu cast upon Karu. Rolling his eyes at the sobbing and enraged girl, he walked up to her with a kunai in hand. Kakashi watched this with confusion and fear. It was no secret that Naruto had a deep dislike for his siblings, but it looked like to him that Naruto was going to put her out of her misery with that look on his face. However, all Naruto did was stab her in the foot, shocking the girl out of the illusion and bringing her back to reality as he walked in front of her. And Naruto? The girl asked in shock. Injutsu and I thought you were smart. Naruto replied before walking off, deep into the forest where there were a lot of shadows, purposefully not showing his hands. Wait. I know what do. Karu shouted after him, but when she reached the spot, he was gone. Huh, where did he go? However, she was still feeling the effects of the Jinjutsu and the QB's chakra in her system, so she walked away, wary of her surroundings, and holding her arm nervously and with a disappearing limp due to the kunai in her foot. The Kashi stood in place, trying to figure out where Naruto went as well. He felt his chakra spike a bit, and then he was gone. No the boy literally walked into a tree and disappeared. What the hell was that? It was then he received the memories of his clone that went after Sasuke. He was so distracted that he never noticed the pair of hands silently grab the pair of bells from his waist. What was odd about them was the fact that there was nothing connected to him, and the fact that one of them was using a tiny ball of dust release to cut the string, while the other silently caught them before disappearing completely. Triple X. The real Naruto walked toward an admittedly hilarious sight. Menma Namikaze was buried up to his head after his fight with Kakashi's clone. Menma though that brute force was going to work for this, so he immediately channeled a good amount of QB's chakra and bum rushed the jonin. Well, this is quite the sight. Naruto said with a smirk. I have to admit that I am enjoying it. Fuck you dead last. Menma shouted. Get your worthless ass over here and get me out. Naruto snorted. Oh yeah, that will get someone like me to help you. Damn it, get me out of here or so help me. Or what, you'll glare at me to death. Naruto replied with an annoying smirk before it became dark as he got in Menma's space. You know brother. I could kill you with ease right now. Menma snorted. Like you know how to hold a kunai the right way, much less kill someone of higher skill. Are you sure? Naruto asked darkly as he placed his hands on the sides of the redhead's face. On twist and no more Menma. Or I kick you so hard the same effect happens. Menma paled considerably. You wouldn't dare. You think it would go well, the failure of the family killing the son of Marworth? I highly doubted. Nah, I am good. I am not a murderer. Naruto replied cheerfully, but his tone darkening still as he put a hand around Menma's neck. But I want you to remember this moment, my hand at your throat, ready to kill you. Remember that in this moment, I had the power. The pale Menma sneered at his brother. Is this why you came, to threaten me? Nope. Naruto replied, his cheerful demeanor returning as it cut all the tension in air, making Menma groan in annoyance. I was going to tell you the true meaning of this test, but... Seeing how you are acting, I highly doubt someone like you would willingly work with me. Boy. Where are you going? Menma shouted once he saw that Naruto was walking back into the shadowed forest. Somewhere quiet. Naruto said with a smirk as he looked back at his buried brother out of the corner of his eye and then disappeared. The Namikas blinked at that. 
It must be the heat because I just saw that Dumbus walk into a tree and disappear. What the hell is going on? Triple X. Noon came around sooner than they thought, and the group found themselves sitting against some training posts with a disappointed Kakashi looking down on them. Kara looked sad, Menma was scowling, and Naruto looked like he just didn't give shit. Well, it looks like you all failed. None of you even tried to grasp the concept I was trying to get through to you. I expected more. Oh and what was it? Menma asked snidely, pissed that he was beaten by Kakashi and then mocked by his failure of a brother. Teamwork. All of you were supposed to come at me with everything you had to get these bells. He said, gesturing to the non-existent bells at his side, which made two of the three blink in confusion. Naruto barely even tried, Karu got caught in my Jinjutsu, and Menma rushed me head-on without really thinking how a Jenin, Jinchuriki or not, can beat a Jonin. Eh, Jinchuriki are superior. Menma mumbled. Sensei, there are no bells on you. Karu decided to speak out ignoring Menma for the moment. Akashi's head whipped down so fast, they thought he broke his neck. Ha ha could I have lost them? Did I drop them somewhere? He asked as he frantically looked for them around and on his person. While that was entertaining the three, Naruto finally had enough and took out the bells, jingling them a bit to get everyone's attention. I get what you did with this test. Naruto begin, you wanted to us to fight each other to see who would get the bells, but also wanted us to work together to get them. The whole thing about only two of us being genin was total bullshit. Anoha is founded on teamwork, and teams usually have four on them. You want only three though? Fine, those two can have the bells. Naruto then tossed the two bells to either side on him, knocking the two out of their shock. How the hell did you get them dope? Menma asked. Naruto shrugged. He must have dropped them because I found them on the ground. Bakashi didn't believe that for one bit, but just outwardly went with it. Is that connected to that disappearing power he has? Peru was smiling softly. So, you do have some skills. I never doubted you bro, but still, why hide them? Well. Kakashi said regaining his voice just as Naruto got up to leave. It would seem that with Naruto's last act, you three pass. Congratulations, we are now officially Team 7. Oh and here are some words of advice. Those who abandon the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. Meet me here tomorrow, same time. Great, we really are a team now. Menma grumbled before he took hold of the front of Naruto's shirt and got in his face. You better pull your weight bro, the team is already weakened just by your presence alone. And don't think I have forgot what you said to me. With that, he threw Naruto away and walked home. Peru glared at Menma as he walked past with a self-serving smirk on his face. She shook her head and held out her hand to Naruto. Come one bro, get up. Naruto, however, growled and batted her hand away. I can take care of myself. I've already been doing that my whole life. Peru flinched at that, a reminder of how different their lives were. Ah, Naruto, can you stay behind, I need to speak with you. Kakashi said after observing the truly dysfunctional family. Something he would be seeing for the time being. The blonde nodded as Karu, albeit reluctantly left to catch up with her other brother. What do you need, sensei? Naruto asked, a bit bored. Bakashi took on a serious look. Despite the fact that most of it was covered. Naruto, I saw the technique you used. It is something I have never seen before. How did you make it? Naruto snorted. He should have known the jonin saw him. Heh, I made it from my father's failure. One failure using another ironic. He said, confusing the silver-haired man. So he held up an arm with a smirk as a truly intricate seal appeared on it. Kakashi's eyes widened to epic proportions when he noticed that part of it had the Horatian seal in it. In truth, Minato, in his anger, tried to replicate the intangibility jutsu that the masked man had used on him. In the end, it failed and Minato cast it aside. Naruto found it and kept it. He didn't really know what to do with it until he was friends with Sasuke and Naruto, asked if he knew anything about seals. Sasuke replied in the negative, but he did ask Itachi. When Itachi saw the seal and purpose for it, he was shocked, but he had a way to help Naruto. There was a jutsu in the Ichiha's vault that was similar to the Sharingan's Kamui. He gave it to Naruto hoping it would help. Plus it was kind of a sad thing to admit, but in recent times, no Ichiha could use it, since they were not good with seals. Naruto worked his ass off to learn everything he knew about seals, and thanks to his Uzumaki blood, it came easy to him after a while. Plus he was able to imprint his medical knowledge to create something else, but that was for another time. But it was true that Naruto learned all he could of the Horatian. Although he had to do so in secret, just like with all his training, including the Rasengan and a few spin-offs. Anyway, he was not able to use the Horatian because it was tied only to Minato, still he used a few seals from that jutsu into his new jutsu to prefect the intangibility jutsu. The end result was something better. The power to be nowhere and everywhere at the same time. He still needed a name for it. Plus, he found a way to get past the Horatian if his father ever tried to kill him. 
That is, a pretty impressive seal, Naruto. Kakashi replied, a little rattled before he sighed as he noticed another seal around Naruto's wrist. It was small, so he had no clue what it was for. Look, I am on your side. And I want to help. Even he saw that Naruto had trust issues because of the boy's parents. Who wouldn't, but he was trying to help. We'll see. Naruto replied before he walked away, but took a risk. If Kakashi really was on his side, then he would not speak about what he saw today. Naruto disappeared in a swirl in the air. Kakashi could not help but gawk. Triple X. Naruto arrived at the door to his father's office. It was nearing dusk, and after a long day of dealing with the village and paperwork he still had more paperwork to do. He was very irritable and just wanted to get shit done. Now was the perfect time to enact the first part of his plan. Knocking on the door, he received an enter and did so. Bonato, seeing that it was his son, just scowled and kept on working. What do you want? Since you are the Hokage, would you mind signing these for a couple of my friends? Naruto asked in a civil tone of voice. Bonato snorted. Friends, right. They wanted his autograph. Why couldn't they come directly to him instead of asking Naruto to do it? Sorry Naruto, but I am busy, I need to get this shit done so I can sleep tonight. Please father. Naruto said while trying not to roll his eyes. I won't ask for another thing ever again. I won't even bother you unless it is ninja business. Finally, Minato just groaned. He was not really thinking straight and just wanted some peace. Fine. He said as he grabbed the two pieces of paper, which looked blank, and signed them. Now get out of my sight. Naruto nodded and left the room, with pleasure. He mumbled so the man would not even hear. Further down the hall, he released the Jinjutsu around the two papers and smirked. He was no longer part of that family. The Hokage unknowingly emancipated his own son, and with the other paper, created a new clan. He quickly took them to the administration building, where he got the papers from, and gave them to the lady working there. She looked shocked that the Hokage had actually signed them. Sure, she thought Naruto was just joking around and was going to threaten the man with them so that he could be treated better, but never in her wildest dreams did she think this would actually happen. Sighing, she took the papers and filed them. She would have a talk with her clan head, Asuma, later on. Good luck, Naruto. Thank you. Naruto said politely with a bow before walking away with a dark smile. Triple X. Naruto traveled through the seedy part of the village, walking along a path he had been doing for a year now. No one bothered him because the people there knew he could hold his own and kick their asses. They knew that Naruto was not the failure he made himself out to be to his parents. The blonde reached an apartment complex that with a large amount of money, he now owned. In reality, he had been saving up his allowance since he was little. He had wanted to get out, so he did. He took meager amounts of money from his parents' bank account, just small amounts, so that his parents wouldn't get suspicious and it worked. He now lived in his own home. Naruto smiled and said, this is my home now. He then walked in, never noticing a figure on the rooftops go poof, signifying that they were a clone. Question is, who was it? Of course Naruto didn't care at the moment. His attention was solely on one object in the middle of his sparsely furnished apartment. A pure white mannequin that held its arm up, showing off open palms. The mannequin had no discernible features other than the complex seals that traveled down its arms and ended at the palms, showing odd circles that had two eyes in it. Artificially created Sharingan there were fully matured. He remembered when he decided to do this. Flashback. The nine-year-old Naruto was bored. He had just split ways with his friends, one of them being Sasuke now. But he didn't feel like going home to where he wasn't wanted. His medical seals were going well. But he had created one that you were supposed to put something in it for it to work. Question was, what? Naruto. Ask a voice to his left. Naruto hadn't noticed he had ventured close to the Ichiha part of the village. Which wasn't that hard thanks to the wall that was taken down. After their incident with the masked man, Itachi offered to take down the walls separating the clan from the rest of the village, so that Minato wouldn't get even more suspicious of them. It turned out to be a blessing because the village got friendlier with them around, and the economy went up as well. It turned out well despite Minato having his anger towards them as well as Naruto. The person who called out to Naruto was none other than the clan head, Itachi Ichiha. Hey, Itachi-sama. Naruto replied in boredom. Naruto, I have told you before, call me Itachi Nichan. The man said with a small smile. After all, you and Sasuke are friends now. Still odd. Naruto replied. True. Itachi shrugged. So what's on your mind? Well Naruto started, unsure if he could trust Itachi or not, but the man did introduce him to Sasuke and their mom, so he guessed he could trust him. Please don't tell anyone in my family, but I am working on a special seal that lets me use the power of someone else. Itachi narrowed his eyes before he asked Naruto to explain, and when he got the explanation of how it worked, he smiled and said, maybe I can help. How so? 
Naruto asked with his head cocked to the side. Well, we could make it so that you can use the Ichiha powers. Itachi suggested. But wouldn't your elders get pissed? Naruto asked. Most likely, but I have never cared what they want. And neither has my mother. Itachi said with a smile before he led the young Namikas to the hospital. And flashback. In the end, Itachi gave him a vial of his own blood to experiment with. Later, a box with a pair of normal eyes was sent to him by a strange Anbu with different symbols on his mask. So Naruto just shrugged it off by inject both Itachi's DNA and his own DNA into the eyes, creating a pair of Sharingan ready for him to use, which he used for his new medical seals that he could turn on and off at will. It was great. And it would help him greatly. In a darkened room sat Naruto Ranyaku at his desk, scribbling down seal ideas and whatnot. He was done with his team training for the day and felt that he needed to reorganize where he put his seals. It was mid-afternoon and he would have to take a break for dinner soon or he could just skip it. However, if he did that, he would have to be cautious of Kara tomorrow. She had noticed that he hadn't been home lately or even eaten with the family in a long time. The charade was beginning to falter and it had only been roughly a month since he became a ninja of Konoha. Looking at the clock, he would have to leave soon and so he cast a glance at his modified wrap seal on the nearby wall. That seal, much like the one that used to be on his wrists, let him transport himself to that house where he was unwanted. The regular war seal was the seal he used to get the bells in his test with Kakashi. It allowed him to safely detach a portion of his body to float around and do what he needed. So far he has only used it with his hands for small stuff like pranks when he got the want and energy to do them. However, he felt that he could use include other parts of his body to save himself if need be. Taking another look at his wall, he looked at the other seals placed that to act like television scenes. He used that for security in that house to see if anyone came near his empty room over there. They would alert him when he was sleeping if they ever came close. Thankfully, they never happened. Looking at the scenes, he saw that the Hokage was not home yet and Kashina was watching some show about a ninja princess or whatever. Kara was practicing with her swords and the power she gained from her mother, the chakra chains. Menma was rapidly punching a punching bag. His room was dark as he let out his frustrations. Naruto now knew that Menma had problems of his own, in which the black-haired boy felt that if he failed in anything that Minato and Kashina would treat him like they treated Naruto. Naruto concluded that Menma thought he had degrade Naruto to keep in his parents' good graces as well. The boy was a paranoid mess. Pathetic. For this, Naruto just shook his head. That so-called family was messed up beyond repair to him, and he wasn't going to put in the effort to help them when they didn't want them around. That was Kara's problem, not his. Finally, he glanced at the mannequin in the middle of his room. On the arms was once again the intricate seal of his seal Sharingan, but far more cleaned up to just cover up the palm of his hands and wrap around them to the back, with three circles rested on each hand. Only one of them was filled in. He had made the seal that was to act as a tri-powered seal. The first was his Sharingan power, but he had nothing for the other two powers. Although he wasn't without ideas, he wanted the blood of the Yamanaka and the Nara. Still he took their blood, he would have to make experimental seals to see if they could work with him. Next was the warp seal around his wrists that looked like an intricate wrist band. He felt that if he added chakra to it the right way, he could make the seal move to where he wanted to make a body part detached to save it if need be. On the back was what looked like an infinity symbol that was his seal to be everywhere and nowhere at once. To keep it simple and not like he ruled the world or anything like that, he simply called it the ghost step jutsu. Next to it, making the whole thing look like the tri-powered seal, was an empty seal what would work on his main element. The only problem with that was that he didn't know what his element was. The reason he wanted to know and utilize his element was because he wanted the ability to fly. With wind, he could just have the seal create a perpetual wind current around him to help him fly. If fire, he could use the seal to act like a sort of jetpack or rocket booster. If lightning, he could probably use the seal accelerate his bioelectricity and the natural electrons in the air to turn himself into a bolt of lightning that could hoover over the ground while also having the ability to travel through power currents. He thought anyway. If it was earth, he could probably use magnetic fields to help him fly. He had no clue what he would do it if it was water. Sadly, the ability to fly was not in the dust release scroll and Naruto doubted Anoki would tell him the secret of how he and his people were able to fly. After all, some village secrets have to stay secret. Suddenly, there was a knock at his door, breaking him out of his thoughts. He looked at his wall of seal visuals to see that the one knocking on his door was not at that house, but at his own home, and it was Asuma. Odd, I wonder what he wants. I also wonder how he knows where I now live. Naruto said to himself before it clicked. Oh right, the lady I gave the papers to was a Siratobi. He must have heard whined about it. Deciding to get up and see what the man wanted, he walked to the door and opened it. 
Asuma, for his credit as a high-ranking ninja of Konoha, could not see inside the dark room that was Naruto's house. Naruto put on a friendly smile and said, what can I do for you Asuma? Hey kid. Asuma replied in a friendly tone. I heard about your little venture from a clan member of mine, and I wanted to see if it was just a prank or it is true. Oh it is very true, Asuma. Naruto replied seriously. Are you planning to tell the Hokage about it? He asked, prepare a little to make him forget about this incident if that was the case. Nope. Asuma said with a small smile. I am here to congratulate you on making a new clan and getting away from them earlier than expected. However, you do realize that when making a new ninja clan, you have a seat on the council and I am not sure, but you could initiate the craw. That made Naruto blush a bit at the last part, making Asuma smirk. Um, I will put that off for later since that is too early for me to be thinking about. Now for the clan head business, I will deal with that when I reveal to the world my power. Asuma raised an eyebrow at that. When would that be kid? You can't keep something like this hidden for too long, not even from the Hokage. You're right. Naruto said with a nod. I plan to reveal the power of the Ranmyaku clan at the tail end of the Chunin exams. The clan head of the Siratobi clan whistled at that. Kid, that is shooting big, but I see your angle. You are going to make the Hokage a fool in front of everyone, aren't you? Naruto's dark smile was all the answer he needed. So. Ranmyaku chaos. Yes. Naruto replied. I see. I want to know more, but I'd rather hear about that story at dinner, so I am inviting you over. Konohamaru has been begging me to invite you. Asuma stated. That is fine with me. Just next time until the Chunin exams, meet me at the Hokage's house. Asuma's eyes widened at that. This is a dangerous game you are playing kid, but I am sure it will work in the end. Just be careful. Naruto smiled. Thank you Asuma, but I have everything covered. I will meet you soon. With that Naruto closed the door while Asuma just shook his head and left, thinking that Naruto shouldn't have to do this. Naruto calmly walked over to his security seal wall and put his hand in the middle, making the seal glow brightly, before his body disappeared and then reappeared in his nearly empty room in the Namika's household. The only things in there were his stuff from when he was much younger. Ignoring the large amounts of dust due to not being in the room, he quickly made his way out, locking his door with seals, and then to the rest of the house. As he was walking his saw Kashina setting up the table with Karu. He was just out of the house when the door opened on its own to reveal Minato. The two stared emotionlessly at each other before walking past each other, and Naruto thought he was home free as he made an appearance, but he was wrong. Menma, who was positioned on the couch watching the tail end of a movie, decided to speak. Oi, loser. Where do you think you are going? He said, getting up to block Naruto's path. Out. Naruto said in a bored but neutral tone. He did it to compose himself around these people, but he also did it because he knew it annoyed Menma for reasons he didn't care to know of. Asuma invited me to eat at his place. Eh, so the failure of the Saratobi clan invited another failure in life. Perfect. Menma said he as he left, shoulder bumping Naruto harshly as he passed. It was no secret what he thought of Asuma. The man may be a clan head, but he heard of Asuma going to the Fire Lord to be a guardian, while the third Hokage wanted him to stay in Konoha. So in Menma's mind, not obeying the man's father made him a failure as well as Naruto. Yeah, go run off to be with the other failures of the village. Menma shouted as he then pushed Naruto out the door and then slammed it shut. Minato just raised an eyebrow as his black-haired son's attitude, but said nothing as he went into the kitchen. Karu glared at her brother though and marched up to him. What was that about? You don't treat family that way. Eh, he is not family to me. The sooner he moves out or gets himself killed the better. Menma growled at the girl, shocking her. He did want to do the deed himself for some reason, but felt that was going too far. There has got to be a reason for this and a way to fix all this. Karu said to herself sadly as she walked to the kitchen table. Triple X. Naruto has quickly got back up and whipped the dirt off his clothes before leaving the Namikaze's yard. He had dinner plans with the Saratobi clan, and a little scuffle with Menma wasn't going to upset him too much. A half hour later, Naruto found himself in front of Asuma's home. It was a nice little place since the guy was actually pretty humble, considering his dad was the Hokage for the longest time. Some would have thought he would have turned out to be some pompous asshole, thankfully he didn't turn out that way. After a few knocks, the door opened to reveal Konohamaru who smiled upon seeing the older boy. The two made their way into the house and the kitchen table where dinner was just starting. In addition to Asuma and Konohamaru, was one just one other person, and that was Asuma's sister-in-law and Konohamaru's mother. The family was small, but they got by just like anyone else in the world. Now, one would wonder where Konohamaru's father would be. Well, while Asuma had been away, his brother was killed in action, and that left Konohamaru and his mother Kuina by themselves. So naturally, Asuma helped by letting them stay with him. He also liked it because it was less lonely for him. 
As they ate, Naruto explained more of his plan to Konohamaru and his mother. They agreed with Asuma that he was walking on thin ice with all of it. They agreed with him though that it was a good plan and hoped Naruto achieved his goals. Konohamaru then got a brilliant idea as he got his uncle's attention. Hey Uncle Asuma. You should give Naruto Grandpa's summoning scroll. I have no interest in monkeys like you, so it should go to someone who could use it. Wait what? Naruto replied, not expecting that. Asuma smiled at that. I am glad you feel that way Konohamaru. I wanted to make sure somehow that you felt like that because I was planning giving to Naruto to help him show his family they were wrong. Are you guys serious? Naruto asked. It seems that way, Naruto. Kuina replied with a shrug. I say just take the gift. It will help. Asuma nodded and handed Naruto a rather large scroll. The blonde looked at it before smiling the Siratobi clan held. Thank you, I don't know how to thank you enough. Asuma smirked. Succeed. That is all I ask. Of course he wanted to Naruto to succeed. A lot of higher-ups have noticed that Minato had changed that day and not for the better, so this was an attempt to bring back the man they all once respected. Because as of now, they had lost a lot of respect for the man himself. I'll do it. Naruto replied with determination in his eyes. Triple X. The blonde former Namikas turned Ranyaku found himself in a training ground with a running waterfall nearby the next day. To him, it was a peaceful little place that was perfect for what he was about to do. Asuma had shown him what to do like how he should sign the contract and how to summon the intended animal he wanted. He had to sign the contract in his own blood and that helped link him to these animals. Next, he performed the correct hand seals and added a large amount of chakra into the mix. He knew that summoning took a lot of chakra and he had that due to him being the son of a form Jinchuriki. However, he was not actually sure how much chakra he was supposed to put in, so he may have overloaded it. That proved true as large poof of smoke engulfed the area. The smoke was large than it should have been because Naruto knew the Monkey King Enma was normal size. So the question is. Who came through? He got his answer of the form of three voices in the smoke, which eventually dissipated to reveal the three beings. The first being the Monkey King himself with the next two being two younger monkeys. Maybe a few of his kids. The Monkey King himself has all white fur, probably signifying his advanced age with hair going down his back and fairly large sideburns going down to his neck. He wore a black suit with mesh armor underneath, over which he wears a sleeveless kimono shirt with white, fur trimmings and markings reminiscent of tiger stripes on it, which is held closed by a sash. Enma also wore a Konoha forehead protector, signifying his alliance with Konoha thank to the third Hokage. The two younger monkeys were brown furred like most of monkeys, but the odd thing about them was the black hair done in usual spikes. The one with the hair spikes going all over the place wore an orange guy. The other one had his hair spikes going all upwards, and his clothes consisted of a pair of blue pants and an oddly shaped shirt that looked like it was also armor or some kind. He also had an air of superiority. Emna took notice of the blonde right away, eyeing the boy white clothing with interest, having never actually seen a human wear such things like that, especially a ninja. He supposed it could be worse. The boy could be wearing orange like his grandson's best friend. The orange-wearing monkey spoke first as he ran right up to Naruto. Hello. Are you our new summoner? Wanna be friends? Oh and do you have food with you? Enma chuckled at that, having expected an outcome like this, and he shook his head. Don't mind him young one. He is always a little hyper, and I will warn you that his appetite is monstrous. He paused as Naruto nodded with a sweat drop. Anyway, you probably already know who I am, but I will introduce ourselves anyway. I am the Monkey King, Enma. The former summon of Hiruzen Saratobi, your third Hokage. The one would rush to you with questions is my grandson's best friend, Goku. My grandson here is named Vegeta. Said grandson nodded arrogantly before he puffed out his chest and declared in a somewhat squeaky voice, that's right, and that makes me the prince of all monkeys. Fear me. With a squeaky voice, the effect of the threat was basically nulled out as both Naruto and Enma chuckled. Now that we are introduced, tell me boy, who are you? I don't recognize the last name. Enma demanded. Naruto nodded, not expecting the Monkey King to know. My name is Naruto Ranyaku. My last name was formerly Namikas. Enma raised an eyebrow at that. The son of Hiruzen's successor. Well, I had heard from the slugs about your predicament and am surprised that the Hokage has let you go that easily. Naruto smirked at this and said, he doesn't know what he did thanks to good timing and some Jinjutsu. Plus, with the name changed to that of Chaos, it shows that I am the Chaos to my father's so-called order. Ah. Enma replied before a thoughtful look came to his face. Normally I have my new summoners lift me in my staff form, he paused as he eyed his two charges. Instead, I will accept you as our summoner if you can lift the combined forms of Goku and Vegeta's staff form. Cool, come on Vegeta. Goku cheer, much to his friends protesting. They then changed into a small red staff. 
Naruto raised an eyebrow at their form, wondering what the catch was. He soon found it when he tried to lift them. It was beyond heavy for something so small. So when he tried lifting it and fell on his face, he heard Enma chuckle softly, probably having seen this before and grew amused each time. But the glare at the old monkey, Naruto tried again. And again. Huffing, Naruto decided that he needed to look at this from a different angle. There just had to be a way to lift their staff form. His thinking, however, was cut short by the dual voice laughing from the staff. That made him lose his cool and he tried again to lift it. An hour later, we see Naruto on the ground next to the staff as Enma looked on calmly. The blonde was exhausted as he had abandoned rational thought to lift the laughing staff. It was so irritating that it had shown that Naruto was capable of more than simple happiness, laziness, and apathy. He had shown more irritability today than for most of his life sort of. So now he laid there, tired out of his mind, and he thought more rationally and decided that he would lift the staff with chakra. He got up, channeled chakra to his limbs and then to the laughing staff, who quieted down and lifted it about an inch off the ground. Enma smiled brightly. Good, now we have a summoner once more. We shall work with you from now on. He paused as Goku and Vegeta turned back into their separate monkey forms, and that gave him an idea. In addition to that, Goku and Vegeta will be your familiars. They will teach you all you need to know about us, and I am sure you can teach them a few things. Awesome. Goku shouted as he ran up to Naruto and grabbed him by the arm, getting a confused look from Naruto. Vegeta was much calmer about things, and he too grabbed the other arm. Be grateful human that you have the Prince of Monkeys as one of your familiars. Also, judging by the confused look on you silly looking face, you have no idea what we need to do to make us your familiars. It is simple, we need to create summoning tattoos on your arms. Enma winced as he remembered the time when he did the same with Hiruzen. Naruto, I would brace yourself if I were you. Why do I ooh? Naruto asked before the sleeves to his jacket were roughly pulled up and the two monkeys bit down on both of his arms. When they retracted their jaws, Naruto watched in pained awe as their saliva glowed before combining with his blood to form a series of kanji on each arm. It is done. Vegeta declared before he nodded to his grandfather and then to his new summoner before leaving in a poof of smoke. Summon us any time you want, especially when you are having dinner. Goku shouted with a big smile before he too left in a poof of smoke. Enma smiled as he put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, who winced a bit and then said, I am sure you will make a great summoner for us, and maybe one day, it will be you who is our sage. Good luck until then, Naruto ran Yaku. He then left in a poof of smoke shortly after. Well, this is certainly going to be interesting. Naruto replied before he saw Kakashi appear in a rather flashy shunshin. What can I do for you sensei? Well, Jiraiya's spy network found one of Arachimaru's old bases, and tomorrow he feels that our team is ready for our first C rank mission. Kakashi stated. Naruto raised an eyebrow and said, so what, Orochimaru is dead thanks to the Hokage. What threat could the guy pose from death? Kakashi nodded, knowing that Naruto really didn't know much about the snake senin. With limited knowledge like that, it was almost expected for Naruto to answer in the way he did. Well, you would be correct in that assumption, but when Minato-sensei killed Orochimaru, he found notes on the man's experiments and found that he was in search of a way to be immortal. The note said he found a partial way to be immortal, but not a true way. Okay. Well, he developed something called the curse seal that he derived from a man from a strange clan and used using them on other people, and not just his apprentice at the time, in the form of Anko. That crazy snake lady. Yeah I can see her as his apprentice. Naruto replied with a shrug. Personally, he liked her and didn't have a problem with her like some of the village did. She was a refreshing sight some days. Right, so the reason we have this mission is because of the nature of this base. It is supposed to hold the person from which the curse originated from. From what Jiraiya said in his letter, it was used as a prison of sorts, and that it still has people in it. I am surprised we are going. Naruto replied very wary of this information. He still did not trust Jiraiya since that day, and he doubted he ever would add into the fact that his so-called father was sent him there was just not right in his books. You may not like to hear this, but you three are his kids, and he expects great things from the three of you. Kakashi replied, a knowing look in his eye regarding the blonde. You're right, I don't like it, and even if it is a ploy to get me killed and out of the picture, I will do this mission and succeed. It will be one step closer to fulfilling my plans. Naruto stated. He had taken to trusting Kakashi a little more. Not enough to actually tell him the master plan, but to give him snippets of it instead. On the off chance that Kakashi was a double agent, he would have much, just a portion of his trust. Right. Kakashi replied wincing at how the blonde thought that everyone was out to get him. It really made him sad and he wished he hadn't been so lazy before, even if the boy had Tsunade and Shizun to fall back on. He wanted the boy to feel that he could trust him. After all he was just making up for lost time. Meet tomorrow at 9 in the Hokage's office. I promise I won't be late. 
This time. Kakashi stated. The blonde just gave the man a deadpan stare, now knowing what Kakashi was like. Thanks for watching guys, hope you all are enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like share and subscribe.